an orgy broke out during your show during my show full on full nudity full, nudity, full penetration intercourse oral sexual intercourse yes that's the best kind of intercourse I didn't stop I realized I didn't want to act like it was my first orgy yeah so I just kind of continued continued the bet and it's hard to not stare you bet it's hard at an orgy yes Oh, I, I became fully engorged pretty quick, which means erectile. Yeah, you're like curious engorged. And I just continued. Right through the orgy, right through the coming. I, I'll get to that. Well, I. You're riding down the Harland Highway. You said that I could do what I want. I know, but when you come on a professional podcast like this, well, you turn your ringer off. Are we rolling yet? No. Okay, good. Sometimes you sneak it in. Yeah, no. To, the, to get the upper hand. I don't even have the muffs on yet. There, there's the theme music. Now you know we're rolling. So we're we're on. We're on. Uh huh. Well, now Adasara. You on the Hala Hawa Parka Dasara the Hala Hawa Parka. I say stuff in Cajun now a lot because I have a huge Cajun audience. Nice. And Cajun is what city? Uh, that's the town of Cage, Nicholas Cage Town. Oh, he's got a town. He's Cajun? got a town. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Uh, Bro Sepiash, welcome. Good to be uh, here, I think. I'm, not, I'm just taking it in, man. You yeah, al- take you al- it slow. You always come in hot. You yeah. Always, uh... I come in hot, but I, what I say is, you, I say act like a J-cloth or a paper towel. Just absorb. Okay, I'm, I'm taking it in. Yeah, don't get... I, I've been here before. Yeah. So it's familiar, and, yeah. and yet it's always, what's he up to? What, yeah. How, how am I going to be used to make your life better? I would say don't get hot, but get tight and stay ripe. Yeah, I don't want to be tight. I just ripe. I'd like to be loose. What about I'd like ripe? to breathe it in and just you know be present. Inhale it. Vulnerable, inviting. So you're talking just so my audience is clear because they're now, not that swift. Now is it your swift. audience? Well, yeah, I pay them to Cajun? watch. Cajun. The cage. The cages. Okay. Is Nicholas Cage Cajun, by the way? He might be. You'd have to ask him. I, I, I try not to speak for others. Because if the Am are Ish and become Amish, yeah. does Cage become John? Or like, does he become or, Cajun? Or Cajish? Cajish? Oh, so he's an Amish Cajun. Yeah. So Nicholas Cage Amius. I believe it. I but believe that sounds it. Greek now. Hey, man, that's a. Well, it's all part of it. I should have bought one of those baby name books. To help there, sort it out. There's still time. There is? Yeah, but Nick Cage, you, you, whatever your last name is, I, I think that could kind of guide you. Yeah. Well, you're I'm, last, fo- I'm foxish. You're foxish. Or why? You're foxy. Oh, that's not bad. Instead of being Amish, you could be um, E? Possibly. Why? Now, should we wrap it up or we're going to go longer? You want to stop already? Yeah. Okay, how, how long did you the want theme? to do? Well, we can end it right now. Okay. Let me hit the I, th- I, I felt it was good. You came in hot. You came in ripe and tight. And we do. We did. We did an hour podcast in like a minute twelve. Well, I thought I, I thought I was loose. You're saying I was tight, but I was just here. No, but you were tight and ripe, like in a good way. Is tight ever good? Well, here's the thing. See, now we've we've drifted into the second podcast because we we finished so quickly and we're so concise. Did I come back? You came back, and now we're doing the okay. next one. Did I repark it? Well, let me just put the theme music All right, on. Let's start. Let's get it right this time. Maybe well, this is the second leave one. Nick, leave Nick Cage out of it. Yeah, this Am is I paid the second for two? one. Am I You're paid, paid for two. Okay. Do so, what you gotta folks, do. this is rare. Welcome to the Halahawa podcast. It's rare you'll get two podcasts in one, but when Foxy comes to town and Foxy does the fox dance, when Foxy does the fox trot, you're going to get a two for one. It's like the Human Torch meets Spider-Man, two-in-one comic. Man-Thing meets uh, The Flash, two-in-one. 
Wendigo meets the Wolverine. Like, I'm talking to it. Do you collect comics? Like, you get this glazed no. oxy cotton look in your eyes. Right now? Yeah. I'm just letting you do what it is that you feel necessary. I know, but when I looked over, your eyes were so glazed over, I thought I was looking at, an, just my, at a that's, lighthouse that's at the just, edge of the that, world. That's just my eyes. I was just taking in your words. Okay. You were absorbing them. Which is something we touched on in the last podcast about now, when two was minutes. That? It was two minutes ago. That was a long time. It feels like right? a long time ago. But here's where you're getting on the Halahawa podcast. Now, is that a new name for it? Well, I did. It used to be Harlan Highway. Right, but now I'm doing it in Cajun. Okay. So. That's Cajun? That's Halahawa podcast. So words don't really connect in Cajun? Well, they do to them. To them. And I do this because they eat a lot of shrimp. These aren't okay. air quotes. These these are shrimp antennae. Those are tenatile? The Cajun tenatile. tenatile. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I, you know, if you're going to come in here swearing and cussing like an well, oil rig just, worker, I, like I, forget I, it, guy. I grew up with shrimp. You did? I did. So you knew you knew this was shrimp. Yeah, but shrimp. we called them tenatile. My dad was a, a handyman-ish. Oh, a handyman-ish. Yeah. So he built barns for the Amish or? Started to. He rarely finished. Yeah, they never. The neighbors usually finished. My dad was a handyman, and he never brought work home with him. Oh, was he quadriplegic? No, just the house was never <laughs> finished. Well, I figure if you're quadriplegic, you're not going to be a very good handyman. Well, it depends, you on what you, depends on what you're building. That's they they true. work with their feet. What if they build a mime house? Nothing wrong with that. That could work. It'd be easy to get out. <laughs> Who needs hands for that? If you're a mime without hands, you're always in the box. Oh, yeah. I wonder if mimes participated in Hands Across America. Well, they did. They just didn't get far. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Wow. I'm still working on trying to find... Oh, uh, what's wrong? Well, I'm you're... just trying to be comfy. I know there's a camera there. Well... The, you know, here's what I, I would say okay, to you. Okay, you're going to tell me what to do? Well, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put into your head a suggestion, and it's sort of a philosophical... You want it low and point it up? No, what I was going to say to you, because I see you're tinkering, life is full of adjustments. I, 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 I agree. It's a saying, I learned it from a Buddhist monk, life is constant adjustment, adjustments and movement and flow. So what you're doing... It doesn't, no one's bothered by it. Oh, they, I'm not either. It. I'm not either. I'm just trying to. Right. I, I'm like a leaf in the stream. Okay. And the currents are moving me, but I'm not stuck. Are you moving upstream or downstream? I go whichever direction it'll change. It's based on wind. But right now. Well, is I it based about, on wind or current? Well, is there a difference? Well, the current, current comes from below, but the wind comes from above. But doesn't the wind change the current? Well, you got me, and now I feel fucked over real hard. That's all right. That's but all that's right. all part of the Hala Hawa podcast. Again, with the words. I, I don't yeah. speak Cajun. I know, but my audience is about 98% Cajun and I think 2% Eskimo. Okay. And which percent two? Well, do you want to hear it when I do, when I rep it? Okay, I've been there. That's north of Anchorage. That's it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I did a, a corporate event. Oh, wow. Up there in Juneau. Oh, God. And my first joke wasn't really a joke. It was more of an observation. And it got me into trouble because I thought uh, an Eskimo was a, a oh. bipolar that went both ways. I thought that oh, was... Oh, uh, a bipolar bear. Yeah. yeah. And I tied it into the ice caps. So was it weird being in an Arctic environment in the middle of the summer? Not for me. Because you did say you were there in Juneau. Yes. Okay. Was everything melting? It was starting to, oh, God. but it got cold at night, and uh, that's it. By the way, speaking of melting, and then we'll start the podcast in about 10, 20, 30 minutes here. That's fine. This is just some small talk oh, before I, we I get have, going. I have nothing but time. <laughs> well, that's what... Uh, the clockmaker said until everyone now, showed clocks, up at his are, funeral. Are clocks <laughs> real? Do they exist? Uh, let me think about that for a minute. Give me a moment. Can we go back to bipolar for a second? Okay, okay, yeah. So it's not, is Eskimo a bad word? No. Have you ever so had... an Eskimo that goes both ways could be bipolar because of the ice caps? Or yeah. is Eskimo wrong? 
No, Eskimo's right. It's oh so right. Okay, if someone could let us know later if Eskimo is derogatory. No, it's oh so right. And when I say oh so right, remember back to the days when you used to do a lot of heavy petting in the back of your dad's Chevrolet. Yeah. And the first time you ever grabbed we, we a We didn't girl, even have a cat. It was just... It, we, was, ju- oh. it was just petting. Oh, just so it wasn't heavy. Yeah, yeah. and it was a Plymouth. It was a 53, was it? Cam- 53 Cambridge. Oh, was its name Christine? Uh, it could have been. Oh, it went God. by Chris. I didn't know the official yeah. title. We didn't have a pink slip. Wow. I bet you didn't. The back of that thing was too dark. Yeah. But um, w- when you when you went for your first breast, and every boy does it. This isn't a pervy thing. Every boy, what's that called? First base? Uh, it, it, it is. I mean, I had a training bra growing up. Oh, you were the one wearing and it. And it was just so I could figure out how to open it quicker. <laughs> oh, wow. So yeah. it really was a, a training bra. Wow, did you have the whip too? Uh, I don't know what that means, but the well, whip. No, the whip. Most trainers have a whip oh, in case no, things but get I should have. Yeah, it should have. But here's my point okay. that that. Oh, there's a point. This is what's well, good. Well, here's Wait, the it thing. It moves this way. Well, yeah. See what I mean? This is wonderful. How yeah. life's full of adjustments. It's like a tree limb. Uh, but here's the point I was trying to make. When every boy, and this isn't a bad thing, every boy and every girl at some time goes to first base or does a fondle or a feel-up, whatever. I don't know what you called it in Cincinnati where you grew up, but um, the girl would always say, is this right? And yeah. the boy's response was always, oh, it is oh so right. Okay, I, I do yeah. like that. Right. I also learned yeah. growing up that you can tell how much money a woman has spent Oh. On the bra, okay. By how long she lets you fumble with it? What? Talk to me. Well, it's always if if you are really working the clasp too Ooh, long. I like that word. She says, "I got it," because right. she doesn't want you to to break the bra. Oh, so, is that it? So you'll really hear, "I got it." And I don't even like opening bras because of lawsuits. Oh. I just say, "You put it on." Take it off take yourself. It off. Yeah, you take it off but yourself. But is it they're worried about breakage or are they worried about we're so unable to do it quickly and efficiently that they get impatient both. and just go, let me do it, I dumbass? Think, I, I think both. I, th- I think they're worried about time and also the value. I like how you said both and somehow that sort of parlays into a pair, a two, pair, a pair both. Of, a pair of tatanks. Like, it's like, oh, Eskimo. Yes. To Tonks, yes. yes. You learned that up in Anchorage? Yeah, you know. No, I don't know. Next to Juno, there's a little place oh, called Oh, you want a Juno? Yes. Wow, must have been a great show. It's a great candy bar. Oh, delicious. Have you ever had a Juno? You know? I do, but I don't know. Ah, they're great. They're all chocolate. They are? Possibly. God. Uh, well, let's jump into let's the, let's start. hit let's the theme. Start. Here's the theme music. Here okay. we go, gang. Have we even started? Well, this, we're starting right now. The, the, the first stuff, we, we did one whole podcast in record time. Yeah. And then we started the second one. We're still in it. Now, is this the Christmas theme? No, there's no Christmas. Okay. This, this is going to play uh, after Christmas. Sweet. So we can talk about post-mortem. Did somebody die? About to. What do you mean? I'll tell you about it. Go ahead. Wait, no, this this oh, brings me to one of my questions. If you were in a workplace, like let's say Ooh. you worked in a warehouse. Now I have to use my imagination. I would never be <laughs> in, in a, a workplace. workplace. Yeah. But if you were, you know, any type of scenario, workplace, post office, warehouse, wherever, and you decided to take everyone out, like you snapped, you redlined. Yeah. What's your method? How would you how would you go a wall? Uh, this is just me because I'm kind of a romantic, right? And this is all hypothetical, maybe or shrimpathetical. Uh, that's fine. Uh, gas. <laughs> so you'd fart them to death. I'd gas leak them and duct tape every. Oh oh, I like did, like like a gas a pipeline. I, I would do that. Wow. And if I had to, I'd light it. I'd, I'd burn them after. So why but this the, isn't something I've thought about, but no, sure. But gas seems to a gas leak. That's what did Vetus Gerolitis. Really, he was eating a Greek dish. Yes. Wait, why? Why the duct tape though? Just so no air can get out. I'm not duct taping my employees, but just sometimes there's cracks. Oh, you're duct taping the the the, the, whole the building, structure, the whole building. 
Because if the gas gets out, it becomes redundant. Yeah, and you're, you're not, not killing them. You're just wasting gas. You're making them sloppy. Yeah. Then you don't get the work done. I want them out. You want them dead. Yeah. But was that the question? That was the question. I just wanted to see, and I, I like the answer. Ingenuity. Um, do you using, have a, a way that blow you... Blow dart. You would do one blow dart? I just... Well, here's the thing of the beauty of a blow dart, and I learned this because when I do drive-bys, I do blow darts. Oh, nice. If you go out with some heat, and you're like... G -g 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 but, but a blow dart's quiet. Everyone turns around. You only get one or two, but when you drive through the hood, and you're like... The sound, right? I mean, even that sound is, so it's, you, it's sexy. Well, it seems more primitive. It, it feels more primitive, but it's more efficient because you're not drawing attention. It lets your spree go longer. So, nice. One. And I and even. Is it always neck with the first blow dart? I go for the neck. And here's why. I had a, I was mentored. By a Kahali. Now, mentored, is that E-R or O-R? Two different words. It's E-R. Okay. Mentored. So, okay. Yeah, with an E. Okay. Um, but I, a Kahali went hagush. Uh, okay, so you were in Hawaii. No, no, this was a uh, the tropical rainforest of the Amazon. Oh, I grew up there. You did? What street? Yeah, uh, it was uh, Bangalore 2. Oh, you're number two? Yeah. I was, I, eight, I was at number then. eight. You I taught, taught tennis. But it, oh. mostly squeegee. Oh, I, I was teaching them how to squeegee, and my dad sold uh, Tupperware what? in the Brazilian rainforest. Got to be hard to do that when there's no doors to well, knock on. I, not only that, but they eat the fruit pretty quick. Yeah. Not a lot of storage. but They don't really have refrigeration yeah. down there. But I love the, I, I just love the rainforest. I love birds. And oh, I dude. love jungle noises. I had an ex-girlfriend that called me Kakur. She called me Kakur. Kakur, Kakur. Yeah. You love jungle noises. I'm yeah, trying no, to provide I, some I know. for you. And, and I'm giving of... you the backdrop to the story. Okay, I'll let you talk no, and I'm then done. I'll do the jungle noises. No, I'm done. Kakur. Kakur. That's nice. Ooh, that's danger. Someone's someone's in danger. So you you know how to interpret ape you, monkey calls. Yeah. The, so that the was the, the call of danger. Yeah. The la the last one was you started off with sadness. Right. Correct. Y you're right. And and then you moved Dude. into you moved into danger. Who are you? Well, Kirk Fox, Kakur to some. Kakur Fox. Well, the girl that called me Kakur reminded me of the Amazon. Maybe she just had a stutter. No, she just couldn't spell. Hey, Kakur. Kakur Fox. We got kicked out of the apartment we lived in because the landlord thought I had a macaw. Oh, God. No, pe thought... no pets allowed. What about Morse code? Morse code in the time. Remember that oh, guy? Oh, yeah. Prince. He could really sing. But anyways, we bought Kakuntuti <clears throat> Bunkako from, from up in the rainforest. Yeah. And he mentored me in blow darting. And he said, just always go for the neck. And it's the most because from you, you to to propel it or to aim to aim because okay. you go right into the corduroy because artery. you also go you start with the neck yourself yeah. that's where the that's air. right you're inhaling and you're like yeah. boom right into that big pulsing uh, what's that called the well, corduroy artery well the the juggler but isn't it there's also the corduroy yeah but I avoid the cartiler the what cartiler. Cartler, I barely know her. <laughs> but this guy, dude, he taught me everything I needed to know about yeah, blow darts. I mean, once you have the basics of, yeah. of p blowing and aiming, what else is there? Well, I'll tell you, this guy was good. And one time uh, he got hired to take out an East Indian woman, and uh. she had the bindi. If you've seen the bindi, yeah. the little red How dot. do you avoid that? Was that the target? He couldn't resist. And he was like, <sharp inhale> right in the, it's like hitting a yeah, dart but that's board. not going to kill her. There's well, a hard bone behind the bindi I bone. I know, but. The bindi bone is, you can't, there's no blood flow. Yeah, you're right. It's kind of right against the cranium. Yeah, you just pull but you right can't out. resist when you're a blow dart connoisseur. Well, when you see a dot. Yeah, yeah. you got to aim for that. Even that's with, the even, even with freckles. Oh, God, John that, Boy that'd Walton. That would be terrible if you're in, like, in Scotland and a redhead you're supposed to take out with a blow dart. Oh, which one would you pick? How do you know? God. Uh, I wanted to ask you because okay. 
You know, everything. Have we started this? Hang on, let me hit the theme music. Hey everyone, welcome to the Holland Highway Podcast, and uh, this is number three. We, we're doing uh, three is this podcasts the third or in one. Fourth? This is the third. It's kind of like a nut roll. It's kind of like okay. a granola roll. We just roll it up, and we're on our third podcast within an hour. How's my hair though? Too tight? Should I open it up for this one? I did. I don't know. It looks kind of slick, Charlie Sheenish. Too, but if you too wanted much? to, no, I like it. But if you wanted to waft it or wiggle it or w- I just don't know. Wave it out. It's up to you. I just feel it's the first. I feel the first two podcasts too tight, and it, it was a bit tight for the first two. Yeah. And Why don't we loosen it up for the third podcast? I what f- can I do? I do? Maybe better. I can adjust my hat a little. Like you know, it we up. had the same color hats, and I, I took it off to not offend. Oh, no, I'm not offended. Queer old Texas. Queer old what? Uh, queer Texas. Queer old Texas? Yeah. Uh, well, I had, don't know uh, if they'd appreciate is, uh, that. Uh, a co-op. This is where I get all my vegetables. Oh, really? Yeah. What, what's your favorite veggie these days? I like half a cucumber. Well, I don't want to know what happened to the other half. Well, it was a long story, but it's still there. <sighs> wow. Almost a pickle. Seedless? It might be now. Uh, But what I wanted to ask you, buddy, is on our third podcast here, which is a record, by the way, folks, you're not going to get this on the other uh, Joe Rogan experience? No. Uh, Crystal Gale's podcast, Fun Shines? No. Uh, Barry Manilow's House of Pleasures? No. Three podcasts in one, and we're just getting going. Hey, I'm just happy to be here. Uh, This one does feel better. This one feels looser. But I wanted to talk to you about, because you're you're one of my few friends that goes deep. Like, I find a lot of people can be very surfacey. And first of all, I want to address why is that? Why are people surfacey or why do I enjoy depth? Well, I want to make that the back end of the question, but I want to explore. So we set up. They're surfacey because they're hiding. From what are they hiding? From themselves, feelings. They just don't want to go deep and find out what made them who they are. But that would insinuate that maybe they're not happy or don't like who they are. Is that that, what you're saying? You're going to have to ask them. I'm just telling you, when people live on the surface, they're afraid to go deep. And it's because they don't like what's inside. Fear, they don't like what's inside. They're afraid what they'll find. Memories, guilt. Do you think the... Murder... Do you think the average person, though, is surfacy? Like on a scale of one to ten, or percentage wise, are people more surfacy or more deep? Surface, man. Wow. Okay. Okay. Now, don't this- you think the planet is surfacy? That's why when you see someone go deep, it's a shock. It's like, whoa. It is. I think so. So why? Okay. Now the. Do you other- disagree that? When someone's deep and honest, it's. Do you act like you've seen it all the time, or do you say, "Wow, that's that's nice to hear." It's Whoa. nice to hear. That's why vulnerability. I wanna, but that's why that's I wanna, the key to life. Vulnerability. If, you, if you're vulnerable, people respond. It resonates. It does. Of course. How do we be vulnerable right here, right now, on the third podcast? Well, Harlan, let me just tell you okay. as a, a friend, okay, that I've been vulnerable. Since I got here, I I, li- I live in the depth. I haven't been hiding. I've answered every question. True. Honestly, I told you some truths. Right, but th- those are the obvious truths. Are they? But are you? Is there, is there a truth you're hiding? Is there something that's underneath the surface that you're not? Keep going, man. Let's keep find digging. Out. Maybe that's up to you to decide if you haven't gotten enough. Is there pain, residual pain, from anything that happened to you in your childhood? I'm sure there might be. We, we, could, we could look for it. Well, this is why I'm asking. Okay, what would you like to know? Is there a resounding moment, a pivotal moment, where baby Kirky... Okay. There was a shift, a psychological shift born of something a situation or words that someone said to you that you felt your world shift 
the Titanic, Titanic Man, plate. I have to tell you. Here we go. I think I, I've been this way out of the gate. I look back and I see so much of me now as a young child. I've always been a, an old man. An old soul? Just an old man, lazy, tired. Even as a boy. Even as a boy. Did but you I, ever... I liked being alone. I used to go down to the tennis courts and just hit a tennis ball against the wall for hours by myself. Did you have a racket? I did have a racket. It was a Garcia. Oh. It was a Garcia tennis racket. Italian. Uh, I believe Spain, possibly. Well, we same got it. Thing. it, it they, was they both talk funny. It was purchased. True, it was purchased at Racket Stringing Workshop. Oh God! On Draper oh, in good. La Jolla. They're good. Which was across the street from Bobby Lee's it. house. Bobby Lee's. Bobby house. Lee grew mm-hmm. up uh, on Draper, I believe. And that's why anyone who knows Bobby Lee knows why he stinks like cat gut. Well, I'm not sure. Does does he have a scent? Well, he smells like tennis strings, yeah. Interesting. I, I just did a, a Magnum P.I. Really? I, did, I tried one of those condoms once, and it kept falling off. Which end did you put it on? The smelly one. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. You got, <laughs> you got to go with the other side. <laughs> nice to see you, Hap. <laughs> it's so nice. Now, just if you can see Harlan Hap, it's so rare that... He goes deep enough to break, but he's implying that the condom he used was used. Well, you, you, you said you used a Magnum PI. No, I know, and he was uh, an investigator, yeah. correct? At yes. least your condom uh, smelled like We have pineapple. so much fun, the four of us here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The third podcast so far is the best. Should we just jump into the fourth and fuck the third? Uh, let's stay on the third. A little floor. longer? Yeah, okay. just because it's nice to see you happy. Yeah, but, you make uh, me happy. But Bobby, I, he smelled great mm. in Hawaii during Magnum oh, P.I. Oh, everyone smells great in Hawaii. Yeah, kind of like poi. That's, a, that, that's, that's kind of a, a coconut dish. Poi? I believe. P-O-I? I, I'm not sure about the spelling. Because uh, the or last... Or is it poi? I don't know. I don't either. But, but anything that starts with the first three letters of poison, I'm a little apprehensive to ingest. A man who works in darts. Yeah, yeah. A man who does work in dart killing. Yeah. But uh, just to, to finish up the last thought. Yeah, about the depth. About the depth. Yeah. I, I think I grew up kind of being a loner, hitting a tennis ball against a wall. Is there symbolism behind a young, scrappy, wiry boy who seeks out the asylum of hitting a fuzzy ball against the wall versus interacting with the group. What's, is there a symbolism? Is there some, something we can take away from that? Oh, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure there is. What maybe, is maybe I like the sound. Maybe I liked just uh, not having to talk. I'm, I'm, I'm quiet. But here's what's interesting, and yeah. and you have me thinking about now my my childhood, good, good. my youth. We're getting deep. We're getting into uh, the layers. My tennis lessons were paid for oh. with bread. My mom baked bread every Sunday, and I would take a loaf of bread down to the Pacific Beach Recreation Center. Okay, and I would give this loaf of bread to a, a tennis instructor named Dave Rath. Same name as oh, the yeah. same name oh. as the manager. Yeah, fam- yeah. Famous Hollywood famous. Hollywood big shot yeah. Dave Rath. But that loaf of bread is what paid for my tennis lessons during the week. When someone wouldn't show up, Dave would let me uh, take a lesson with him. For a loaf of bread. Yes. And I I often have thought that if we had included jam mm. or salami, oh. I may have been better. You might have been hit the pros had you handed him a full sandwich. Yes. I was just giving him a loaf of bread. Well, you know, the interesting thing here is there is a nickname for money. People say, hey, man, you bread. got any bread? And so I think somewhere deep in your subconscious, you were... Thinking that that loaf of Wonder Bread was a legitimate currency. 
I thought I think it was it, it did pay for it, but ever since then I've 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 been a I've been big on the barter system. Oh, God. I like to I like yeah, to trade yeah, trade trade. So these are all things from my youth that possibly you, you know I, I've held on to. But here's the last thing I'll yeah, t- please, I'll, I'll tell please, you that because I have something I want to follow up on that you said that's very important and revealing. But please, can you, you remember go first. it? I will. I will not. I will. Okay. Uh, Dave Rath, yes, the tennis pro, pro. had a 1973 VW Bug, a, a Volkswagen. Sure. And he took the passenger seat out. Here we go. And he had a basket. Robbins? Uh, no, no. A basket of tennis balls oh. that, that he would put in there. Okay. And later in life, my dad had a Honda Accord that he took the passenger seat out of. Oh, here we he put go. a little table in there that he would cut apple and cheese up on when he would go on long drives. Okay. He he did not like to stop at a drive through. He he thought he was a drive through. Yeah. But one other famous gentleman, oh boy. Someone you might know who had a, a 73 VW Bug also and he Took the passenger seat out, out yeah. as well, yeah. so you couldn't see the the bodies, bodies of the young female. So Dave Rath, my father, Ted Bundy. and Ted Bundy are the th- three gentlemen I know <clears throat> that took the passenger seats out of um, you know two VWs and a Honda. Does the third guy get the gentleman moniker though? Was he really a gentleman? Uh, Ted Bundy. Was quite the gentleman. Well, so he was not charming. Yeah, but gentleman. And then, then he would turn on you. But Ted Bundy could really uh, coax a woman yeah. into uh, his lair. And he would eventually kill them, bite them. That's how they caught he him. He took the back seat out? Front seat. Oh, he took the front seat the out. The passenger seat out, like my dad and like Dave Rath, the tennis pro. So you kind of, by association, intimidating that your dad and Dave Rath could have been serial killers? Who knows? Uh, you didn't know I, a lot I'll about be, your dad. I'll be honest with you. We don't really know who is and isn't a serial a killer. killer. My dad had a lot of the... Uh, what what is the word? A lot of the, a lot of the things that would lead me to believe he could have been attributes. A, is that the word attributes? I believe it is. But I, I think he also was a loner. <sighs> Met my mom late in life. Wow! So he but, worked at a bank. <clears throat> Uh, no, I had mentioned he was a handyman. Oh, okay. When you said I, I he think was on a one loner, of the earlier I pass, I, er, earlier pods with you, I think I okay. ex- explained that my dad. Was a special well, special gentleman. Can I dip back into Please, something you I, said? I didn't come here to talk. No, but I can't. I think we need to break down this this uh, solitude that you created for yourself. <sighs> this sort of self imposed isolation. Uh, and if and I, I could, wish I still had it. Well, uh, I have a family now and a child, and boy, here's how I think you can get this back. And this is why I'm, I'm glad we uncovered this burrito because. We're peeling back the layers. We're getting below the surface like I had kind of thought we would. I'm glad we are. It's nice. You talked about hitting the tennis ball against the wall. And something I've never heard anyone ever say before, you like the sound. And when you're standing alone and you hit a tennis ball against a wall and you're, let me recreate it. No, it, it was more of a well, it's more of a show. thump, it's more it's of my a show. I think, but that that's a well, that's like a little golf ball click. Okay, well, if you could do it for us, well, I I don't even more of a uh, more of like a. No, that's a dart. <laughs> okay. Well, that's something also little boys do when they're around fourteen. Yeah, but that's kind of the pop. Okay, I but I, I, there, but I also remember now that when I was hitting the tennis ball against the wall, right. I was underneath kind of a, a, a ceiling, okay. a, an overhang. It's okay. So, you so can that, say may, you're have, that may have increased the echo. 
Well, here, but it was at Pacific Beach Junior High where I would. Well, here's where I'm going with this, and okay. forgive me for being an armchair psychologist oh, right uh, now. Please use your arms where you can, my but, friend. Okay, I just want to help you sort of figure well, this out. I don't out. need help. I'm well, just happy to be here. I think maybe someone does. Sweet. Hopefully, it's me. I I'd love to leave here better than I was and when you I will. arrived. You will. Ready? Okay. When you hear that. The pentamic dynamiter, pentamic meter. Yes. The continual. Does that not sound a lot like inside the mother's womb hearing her heartbeat? Oh. And so what that did, you playing tennis in isolation, separating yourself from the pack. Yes. You were returning to the womb, my friend. That, I think... Is it? And that's why you were the only boy in class covered in placenta. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. And that's rice, correct? Placenta? It is a brown rice, a wild rice from the it, Mediterranean. Yes. So, yeah, I ate a lot of placenta. Well, but I, you're, you're I, welcome, hey, by the way. Let me tell you something else. Well, Harlan, was, right? Well, okay. Okay, Harlan. Harlan-ish. I was down in La Jolla... A few weeks ago, I was doing oh, I was we... doing some comedy, telling some jokes. Okay, here we go. And I, this... I went for a walk. Oh, you love my... Chinese food. I do. Uh, and I walked over to the La Jolla Recreation Center. Let me guess. And I borrowed a tennis racket. And I went and I hit against the wall, and it was a wood. Stuff? It was a wood wall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it just felt right. And I hadn't done it in years, my friend. Back so to the I womb. think I Back think to the womb. I think it's my happy place. Wow! I think just it hitting isn't. a tennis ball against a wall, and even in my house, I'm often just swinging the racket. I don't get out to play enough. Yeah. But I think uh, I'm probably at the top of my game right, just, right now. I just don't have the the energy or the strength. But I, I think I could. I'm just what I listen. I, this is great chitter chat, but I'm just glad I could help you. Help you could come in here and I could help you figure this out, resolve it. Not that it was a problem, but just maybe it gives you a little bit of uh, you know, helps you smooth out the rough edges from that tumultuous childhood where you were alone and hitting a ball and wondering why. Why am I doing this? You were going back to the womb, placenta boy. I like it. And I, I still, I, th- I think it's where I'd like to live. Let me ask you this. Go and ahead, I, man. I, have, I think I know the answer. but To, some... to what? Something you're about to ask? <laughs> well, yes. Okay. But I think i got to ask it. Super. I'm right here. I'm, I'm so ready for this. Go ahead, my friend. Let me adjust this because it seems like a question that's, whew. Okay. Well, <laughs> being, being placenta boy. Now, is it placenta or placentia, which is a city? <laughs> it's placenta. <laughs> well, that toe was a little aggressive. Do, do you ever, on a Saturday night, you're home alone, just strip down, put relish all over your body and pretend you're covered in placenta and go back to the well, womb? I do, but not relish. What is it? It's more of a kind of a mustard, <laughs> but a hot mustard. It's just a bite, <laughs> kind of a wake up. <laughs> Great, let's start the fourth podcast. I'd like to we? get into here. The we go. We're hitting the. Th- I should clean up a little. Yeah, clean up. You want to go do a tinkle or anything? No, just I just fix your wig. Boy, we, we learned a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Holla Highway Podcast number four. You don't get that on any other podcast. This is a four-in-one. We call Harlan, this a bundle. Each, each one. I feel we've gotten deeper. We've gotten deeper, and uh, and I'm gonna look at my thing because. And I, I feel. That oh, let can we finish the deep thing up? Even though this is bleeding over from the third podcast. Yeah, of course. Because as I said, when we started podcast number one about three hours ago, I said this is one of my deepest guests. Yeah. You're probably the deepest. I don't know what that means. Well, it just means you. I'm deeply superficial. You are? Yeah. But see, a deep person would say that to throw us off from recognizing the multi-layered lasagna that you are. Sweet. 
And so I'd like to conclude our conversation about depth by asking. Boy, conclusion, I, I don't ever want to finish anything. Ooh, that's profound. Well, go ahead, though. But Period. I just finished it. Yeah. Threw a period at you. Uh, no, I can't go I past stopped. a period. I don't like periods. Well, you should buy I like some to tampons. Dis- well, that too, but <laughs> <laughs> let me just tell you something as a friend. Uh, I don't like periods because I'll stop reading when Bleeding. I when I want. Okay. Yeah. I don't I don't right. need, I don't need right. a writer telling me right let's stop here and get ready for a capital letter what kind of nazi bullshit is that well it's ego based yeah i'll it's finish like, a sentence when i want yeah if i'm reading and i have a little momentum yeah. the last thing i want to do is stop oh that thought i just want to keep going and i don't like commas oh yeah They're like speed bumps yeah just let me go i'll yeah. de- i'll decide when i've read enough exclamation points don't yell at me yeah i'm doing the best i can hey, tone it down junior i'm yeah. reading this yeah. is a library i mean i'm not a reader because of a, a terrible reading accident when you know, i was eight i don't even want to get into it well the worst one for me is the semicolon and not because of grammar but i had bowel cancer ah so you had i not, have not, a semicolon i know but that what does that mean it's not fully colon it's they took a lot of it out. Oof. Wow, that's a that's a bite. So do you not fully poop? Well, let's skip along, shall we? Let's go right okay. to podcast five. Sweet. I mean, I this think, is the most I've done. I don't do a lot of podcasts. Yeah, you, this is I think a record. I don't <laughs> but think when this I might do be a, the most. When I do a podcast, I like to do as many as I can. Well, then you don't have to keep coming back. I you like know, it's it. called economizing your time. I like those words. And that's words. what friends do. Huh? We look out for each other. I'll take it. Welcome to the Holla Highway podcast. Uh, just spilling over from the first four. Okay. Do you have a deep thought you can share with our, our audience here? Do you have a, a deep thought that's something you sort of live by, a code, or just a random deep thought since we're, we're getting into the layers here? Because it's one thing for us but to what, just what talk it, about it. What but is a deep thought? Just words that mean something? It might be words that, that the average person might, might not think about on a daily basis. It might be motivational. It might be uh, spiritual. Here's one I do like. Okay. Is this yours? Yes. Okay. These are all mine. Okay. I say, don't try to figure life out. Let it figure you out. Oh. That's pretty deep. Explain, please. I have no explanation. Just be who you are. That should be enough. You don't need to figure anything out. Just be who you are. Let the world figure you out. You don't have to figure anything out. Anything. Why would you? Now, what if you're doing a jigsaw puzzle? Are you? Fuck me tender in the night. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. It could be doing you. So I could be the mountain scene with the 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 leopard. You're, You're the puzzle. Let someone figure you out. Try and put you together. Here's another one that is interesting. Okay. And this might apply just to me. Okay. But I've worked hard to get where I'm not. Wow. And that's just who I am. Because I have nothing. But I've, I've, I work so hard at it. I have, no, I have no money or family, really. I have a wife and a daughter. But what, what does that mean? But have you ever heard the term, and this isn't mine, you are rich, in personality. I, I've heard that. Am I? I think you are. I think anybody watching these last five podcasts would say, how do we get this guy to shut this off? Do I have to? Well, you don't even know you're doing it. I also think this often. Okay. Killing can't even begin to describe what I do to time. It's a massacre. Killing time. Can't even begin to describe how I kill time. It's a massacre. Like, I don't just kill time. I I massacre it. You like Oppenheimer it. 
Why though? See, I didn't want to have to. Exactly. I didn't. Gosh. I already did the tennis ball back to the womb thing, yeah. and for you to put on me, I'm trying to have a friendly conversation. But, but I've never worked, so I've avoided a work-related death. Well, by not working. <laughs> so you didn't really blow a dart, but I felt something come at me. You reacted. That's and who that, I am. That's the power of my mime. Learned this. Uh, I went to uh, a mime school up mime at school. DeVry. And your, your professor, no hands. No hands. Um, just nubs. Um, okay, I like those. I like those deep, like, kind of things. I have one where my, my, my motto is, it's similar to yours. Okay. Strangely enough. Live life. Don't let life live you. Exactly. I, I love that also. Mm -hmm. I think they can all tie into, uh, I think they're all the same. Just don't give a fuck. <sighs> Have you heard that one? What is it? Don't give a fuck. I tried to live by that one, but uh, holy God, I ended up down at a whorehouse one night and it just didn't work. Where was this? Down on Melrose, Larry's oh, Whorehouse. I know. All you can plow for $40. That's not bad. Yeah. I mean, Larry's in there also, right? Oh, God. The, he like, runs the buffet. He's always like the fifth. Um, oh, here's something I want to talk about to you. Okay. How's the hair? Well, I'd give it one more pass. Rub your hands through it one more time. Can I just tell you one thing before you go on? Yeah. And this is means a lot to me. Okay. I, that's but why we're friends. I'd say a week ago, I went to trim my mustache. A week ago, five days or the full seven? Like five. a working man's five. week? Five. So a working man's week. And, and you're went, a guy who said he I doesn't have a job. I went to trim my mustache. Okay. I thought it was at an eight. It was at a two. Oh, the, the electric yes. blade thing. Yes. Okay. And it took it from a full mustache of happiness down down to a two. And it's 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 begun to come back. And yeah. It, it'll be here soon. But I'm just for me to go out like this yeah. with uh without You are the victim of what we call an involuntary stubble. Wow. You wanted an eight. You only wanted to bring it down I so just far. Don't know. I wanted to balance it out. Were you, what was distracting you that you didn't take note that you were down on the level two well, versus I the had, eight? I had been going back and forth. Uh, Sleepless I, nights? No, my wife, I was trying to get the right look for uh, an oh. audition. I was going to do oh. a self-tape. Oh. I, I wanted to take down all the gray because I'm a young man. Well. But somehow the gray gives me age and just didn't need that much age so i just wanted the mustache but sure enough took it down too low but I, i'm still handsome you're really handsome i think I it mean, the works eye, the eyes pop and long eyelashes you know green eyes I, I, your eyes are they green oh they're they're probably the greenest green probably ever i can't they're tell for me they're either green or bullshit one or the other well they're they're a strong green well it might be strong bullshit too uh, now, was that you or my eyes? That was your eyes. Interesting. Dude, your eyes. They speak. Wow. But look how the people are. I don't know if you... Because well, you, you control the edit, so I don't know if you're, if you're here right now. Dude, if you need a moment to seduce my crowd with your eyes, do it. I'll no. I'm sitting back. No, I'm not, I'm not going to do that because I, I can't... Seduce away. <laughs> Did you hear my stomach? That was your stomach? I thought that was your eyes speaking no, again. No, my stomach got involved. You know, the seduction is just being present, yeah. open, vulnerable. Wow. They've learned about tennis and my dad and wow. what I'm capable of. We talked about... You know, I come from a long line. Oh, really? A suicidal family? Just a long line. It was just... Oh, I pictured a bunch of people hanging from a tree. No, oh, eventually... But wow. that's just, you see how the gas works. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, we. Oh, go ahead. Seduce no, I, them. I went back to them. That was a quickie. Go. No, that was enough. It really was. Like, I'm sitting here. I know you. I'm not into men. And I felt a little, like, jolt go through me. When I, I can come in hard. Yeah, you do have those seductive fucking eyes. Can I? Okay, you had a, no, a big, go ahead, you had go a big ahead. question. I do, but I, okay. I saw a light bulb go off, and uh, I need to hear this. This happened just was, recently. Okay, here and we I, go. I, I just want to run it by Let's you. Let's get it out. Get it out. And, and see yep. how you would have reacted this is we we're bouncing we're bouncing uh, i'm gonna say that like i i tell you know if they're jokes whatever i do on stage stand up comedy but whatever it is i, I don't know if it's jokes or just i try and connect or yeah. i'm just killing time i i don't know but it's kind of jazzy uh sometimes i tell jokes you can nod out to you yeah, know, like oh, I yeah. like if I Definitely. look out there and see someone sleeping, Just, I'll be like, I got them. You got you nailed them. Yeah, I get and, what you're doing. Yeah, and uh, it's I, niche, but it, it's good. Yeah, they get home. It's like, how was the show? It's like I don't know, but I feel rested, relaxed, yeah, soothed. But I also tell jokes you can make love to. Wow, are you serious? And something happened a month ago. That I, I haven't really talked about. Get it out. And I'm just going to run it by get, you. And I would like to know what you would have done yeah, in, in the situation. Bounce, bounce. So I was doing a corporate event. Can we say the corporation? It was Ferrari. For who? Ferrari. Who's Ari? Well, Ferrari is a car. Oh, I thought you said it oh, was I know, Ferrari. I know. Uh, I believe F-E-R. Well, F-E-R-U too. I'm just asking who Ari is. Okay. Uh, Ferrari. No, thanks. I have one. Sweet. I like it. Oh, yeah, so, I haven't seen it. Should we start a new pod? Let's do a new okay. one, and then we'll pick up where. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Is six? Number six. Okay. Welcome to the Halle Hawe podcast, number six, or in German, sex, or in French, six. So that's 666, and here, hold on. He's pointing to me. No, yes. the fact that you mentioned sex, it's going to tie into... To our first topic for the sexed episode? Yes. Okay, here we go. This is all symbiotic, kind of like your twisted sister's rotten teeth. Oh, I like that. I like that. So, uh, Parma. Oh, my favorite cheese. Exactly. And this is in Italy. I was at a corporate, (laughs) corporate, corporate event. We have so much fun. We just enjoy each other's company. So, Parma. John, yeah. Okay, corporate yeah. event for okay. Ferrari. Ferrari, sure, okay. now we know. And uh, a villa, a big house, a lot oh, of money. Oh, God, And okay. I was up there doing whatever it is I do. There was a microphone, a little podium. Okay. And in the middle of a story or just calling attention to a statue or something, yeah. an orgy broke out. During your show. During my show. So when I say I tell jokes you can make love to, I'm not kidding. I would say 50 people. That's 25 pairs. Yeah. There was a few stragglers maybe. I'm just saying there may have been 50. Wow. I did not know if, if I caused it. I didn't know if it was planned but an orgy broke out. Full up. on, full nudity, full, nudity, full penetration. Intercourse, oral. Sexual intercourse? Yes. That's the best kind of intercourse. I didn't stop. I realized I didn't want to act like it was my first orgy. Yeah. So I just kind of continued. Continued the bet. And it's hard to not stare. You bet it's hard at an orgy. Yes, Oh, I, I became fully engorged pretty quick. Wow. Which means erectal. Yeah. You're like curious engorged. And I just continued. Right through the orgy. Right through the coming. I, I'll get to that. Well. I got involved. Wow. I, I handed out water. Okay. I just, it was my first... Orgy, orgy of that size. 50. 
50 is a big number. 50 is a big But I got involved with the water. I, okay. I, I wanted to make a good impression for America. You so walked through the orgy. Just handing, handing out, out yeah, water. Like if a water looked, boy. So if someone looked thirsty. Yeah. And here's what I learned. And I, I didn't stay for the cleanup. Okay, good. I, I think when you have an orgy. Yeah. Uh, I think Get out if before you're the, host, the final act. I think if you're the host, yeah. I think the next day, I think the cleanup is like, oh, yeah. was, it, was it worth it? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Okay. Now, here's what, here's what you do. You relax. <laughs> like a riptide. Okay. I let the current of the orgy drag me. Like the leaf floating on the river. It all ties heart, the heartbeat of my mother, the tennis ball. Placenta. I I went out about a mile, and I swam diagonally along the orgy. Like a bishop. Yeah, and a knight, and a pawn. Well, they don't go diagonally. Only the bishop does. They do, but you lose immediately, and that's what can happen in an orgy. Wow. So... Well, this is just something I wanted to ask if sure. you've if you've ever been caught up in an orgy. I have been caught up in an orgy. Um, I wasn't on stage doing a bit. I was deeply, deeply involved in the orgy. Organizer? No, more like organ grinder. Okay. I was going from person to person. So organ grinder. This is a coffee was no, involved. I mean. My organ was, I mean, it was so like... So you were grinding an organ. Yeah, and I was just hopping and Penetration popping. Yeah, or exterior grinded? Sexual intercourse. Okay. Uh, ours was probably about uh, 150. Wow. And uh, if you've ever Ooh, seen a rabbit... That's a, big, that's a big number. Right. Picture a rabbit... It's with, a prime number. Right. Picture a rabbit with rabies, epileptic, and hit by lightning. That's going in a lot of holes. Wow. And is that one person? This was me, yeah. I oh. was servicing everyone at the orgy. Wow. And uh, But you asked, so uh, So yeah. the corporate event, they just brought you. Oh, mine wasn't a corporate event. This was at the Los Angeles airport, Terminal 6. Wow. Yeah, unbelievable. Six, well, tied into the German 6 episode. That's right. And this Sex. is what happens when you have flight delays. People get bored, they get antsy, wow. and uh, there's a lot of space in those terminals, and I just, you know, grab the thing at the, you know, they get the little yeah. microphone. Attention, passengers, going to Minnesota now, 5703. Would you like to have a where sexual orgy? the luggage orgy? goes around? We did that later. We went down for the second round, and then Because here's would, something. Okay. I, I okay. don't mean to ever interrupt. No, but you did four times. I apologize. But that's, I like it. I like it. This is just exciting it's stuff. It's like coitus interruptus. So if you could imagine, mm -hmm. let's, let's cut your number in thirds, just 50 women. Okay. On the carousel. Well, we call it lug luggage rack, fuck. Okay, on the luggage rack. Yeah. If there's 50 naked women on their knees mm -hmm. and you're standing there waiting for your for your luggage, mm -hmm. golf clubs or whatever you travel with. Yeah. And you're naked, which happens. Does for me. So if you're just standing there as the women come around the carousel mm -hmm. with their tongue out and your penis out. How great would that be? It was, it'd be like a fan. Each one would just lick, like a Tootsie Roll. Mm -hmm. Well, here's, Is this something you've thought about? Here's where it got a little selfish. You know how you've heard that time you put notches on a headboard of when course. you've had women? So as the women went around, I had them put their baggage tag around my thing, and I Whoa. just that's how I know I had 60. Got them home and counted them, 60. Wow. And a few were to Brazil. That's not bad. One to Greenland. I'll never forget that one. Oh, so they, they're environmental. Well, Greenland fellatio is like no other. For some reason, you well, can moldy. see their breath. It's moldy. You can see their breath. They're so used to. So that's, that's crazy. Yeah. So yeah. you've been to an orgy. But I like yeah. that idea of 50 mm -hmm. naked women just on a kind of a conveyor belt of, of uh, well, oral Tongue work. What's great is you can keep them organized because after they go by, you slam them into the suitcase and then you don't get repeats. Uh, we're different. I'd like the repeat. Well, 
Mm-hmm. Because whoever wins, whoever gets the ejaculatory, you know, maybe gets frequent flyer miles. I don't Wait, know. Wait, so this happened on Halloween? Hmm. It may have started on Halloween. But you said there was ejaculatory. <laughs> nice. That's sweet. sweet. I, sometimes I laugh at just things that matter to you. But here's, let me just finish yeah, up. Yeah, finish up. Let me just yeah, no, take your ordinary. time. Take your okay. time. We got all the time in the world. Do we? Okay. Yeah. Do we want to do number seven or we stay on six? We might do it. You're right at the edge. You probably have about two minutes left on this, and then it'll probably drift into a seventh episode. Well, okay. Uh, so I do comedy sometimes. Yeah. I told you about the orgy. By the way, can you tell us what the bit was you were doing? I what, don't even remember. What the remember. topic was? I, I, okay. I think... Uh, I think it was something food related. I do a lot of uh, okay. It was a banana bread reference. Okay. Oh no, not that again. Yeah, we'd rather be fucking. It's like, wait, didn't I see that? Yeah. Banana bread last year. Saw that. Someone put it in me. Yeah. You know, I get it. But whatever it was, it was a strong, committed delivery. Got it. To the point where everyone's like, banana bread. (laughs) Hey. Again. (laughs) Clothes flying off. Oil everywhere. Banana bread's. No, it wasn't banana bread. What's, what's the cake that? Banana cake, carrot uh, cake. No, there's a certain cake that people pass around every year. Bunt cake. I don't know, but whatever it was, I was like, I went with banana cake. But now that I think about it, I think the joke was didn't work because you didn't have the cake you yeah, pass what's around. The, what's the cake that? Valhalla bread. No, there's no vampire involved. Mulholland Falls. It's, Possibly, uh, there was uh, Niagara. But let me get back to. You were on Viagra. Yes, you should have jumped for in for sure. They uh, should make that you know something you could pop in your mouth. Yeah, the Viagra that you insert the pee pee. Yeah, doesn't matter. That hurts. But, so I do shows all over the world, and I do prisons now. Oh wow! Okay. And I did uh, Pelican Bay shortly oh, after God. that orgy. Okay. And the prisoners, good listeners, receptive. Yeah. But no orgy broke out. In the prison? Yeah. Was it but, an all-male prison? Yes, but... Good thing. It looked like it was on their mind. Yeah. They're hungry. Those guys are hungry. They don't want to be... I don't know if you've ever been in prison. It always looks like an orgy's close. It's close. They want to, but they don't want to step over the lo- that sexuality yeah. line. Yeah, yeah. But they don't have a lot of choice, and so they're always like, should I or shouldn't I? Yeah. If you were in prison, would you? Are you asking me? Yeah, would you? Yeah, uh, the only reason I brought up the prison is now that now that I've, I do comedy and orgies break out, Yeah. as I'm in a prison, I wonder if it's coming. <sighs> they probably will be. Yeah, good point. Um, just do me a favor. Don't ever do a senior's home. Oh, I, I will if they ask. Well, you don't want to see an orgy there. I Why mean, not? A lot well, of broken hips, you ever, dust. You ever walk through a forest and it's puffball season? I haven't, but it's, it seems like... You step f- all over them and there's just little... <laughs> <laughs> now, puffballs, is that their hair? Wait, the puffball, <laughs> is that that little thing where you... Blow it. No, you squeeze it. It's like a form of fungus or mushroom, and you squeeze it. And, and it that's the elderly? The, the puff, this, that like, puffs up. Ah. Oh, yeah, sorry. That, to me, sounds ro- just yeah. fun. Romantic. Yeah, in a way. Oh, God. Oh. I have four super fans on death row. Talk to me. Uh, well, I do in Mississippi. Yeah. I have four super fans. You know, the best thing about having... Next month, fa- I'll be down to two. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, we'll see how the appeal goes, but that's that's just life. Well, the great thing about having fans that are on death row is they can't go anywhere when they're strapped to an electric chair. They sc- kind of have to listen to your act, and you just, with their eyes, are like, pull, throw the switch, throw the switch. Yeah. By yeah. the way, if you want to watch Green Mile later up at my house, we'll go over oh, to my place. That's too far. Uh, well, we could, I did, I've got I ran it on five, Blu-ray. I ran a 5K recently. I'm not going to do a Green Mile. Whenever you do that, I'm just going to sit back. You're only human. I don't.
don't have the but power. But death row is interesting. We usually talk about last meal. Oh, That's, yeah. Because we talk. They have my number. I always say, hey, man, Taco Tuesday. And they're like, that'd be great, but they're killing us on Thursday. Oh, so, right. Are they going to eat tacos for a whole day? They'd have to be the minis. What's your last meal, though? What would it be? Man. Your last supper. I got to be on. Uh, tacos, I'm a big fan. My mom used to make tacos. So I think my last meal would be tacos. My last supper, I'd just say I'll have what Jesus is having. That's nice. I don't know what he ate. And who is Jesus? I'm not It's the religious. son of the Lord. It's the son of God, the almighty, holy lamb, savior, See, holy these host. these are all things. Hey, Chris, who's ace? Great. Jesus, holy lamb, holy saint of the savior, the holy Lord, son of Mary, father uh, of... Cajun. Cajun gentleman? I guarantee. Guarantee. Hi, hi, y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I guarantee. Uh, buddy. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Are you ready for words from a wooden shoe? Wait, are we already done? Well, I, we, you know, we got deep. It, if it feels like it went fast, two things. We got deep. Okay. And we did seven podcasts. Okay. Can I tell you one thing that I wanted to? Okay. Okay. Before we get... Words from a wooden shoe. Now, I, I believe in the past... Okay. I have told you... And I, I'm sure I have because we're friends. I, I, yeah. I have a daughter... I, yes, we do know beautiful this. daughter, and beautiful, and we do know I'm I'm old fashioned. I got married for land. These are all things, land. and I have a pea tree. We've often talked yep. about yep. The, the pea tree. tree. I like to pee on the tree, yep. and it used to be avocado. And now it's cut more lemon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But my daughter, you remember, she'd go when I pee, she would pee also. Right, right. She would go to a mound, and I'd, I'd put her in the shoes with the flashing lights. Yeah. Sometimes at night. At night, yeah. It's very was, tribal. There was a California condor that would swoop down, <sighs> grabbed her once. And Huge I wanted birds. To know, I wanted to know where to tell the police what street she was last seen yeah. on. But since I've seen you last. Okay. Oh, boy. And she would pee with me every time. This is passion. Every time I peed, she would go outside. Father, I'd, daughter, pee. I'd pee on the tree. She'd pee on her mound. Yeah. Got it. And it was, it was the best part of being a father. Yeah. Was. I don't know if I like past tense here. She has started. Don't say it. Using the bathroom. God, they always do. We now have nothing no more bond. Nothing in common. Have you thought about doing number twos together? I haven't really thought too much about wiping her. That's, that's when politics get involved. Well, you are outside. She can just use leaves. She's not outside anymore. She goes inside to pee. But here's the thing, and this might be the silver lining. Okay. Uh, and I can find some consolation I believe, is that the right wording where there's... If it's nighttime. Constellation, I believe that would be a T. Well, she I'd still, like to drink coffee when I look this at is the, the stars. I guess this is good news. She still stands. Like a man. To pee. God. She would pee. When she peed outside, she would always stand. Good Strong calves, which confused me. Well, it's really just ant prevention is what that is. What's that noise? The ants. The walls. Okay, I just heard something. But uh, so I just wanted to let you know that Addison now oh. uh, uses the bathroom. Oh. So we have nothing in common. Oh, and there's just sadness here. Can I make a suggestion? I don't know. If, yeah. For a way for you to bond? Somebody, when they were a little boy, hit a tennis ball all alone. What if that lonely little boy now had a partner, a daughter, a lonely. Pee sitting down daughter, and you could hit the tennis ball back and forth to each other. And here's the irony in all this. Many tennis balls nowadays are piss yellow. And that's from me to you. Take it or leave it. I'm just trying to keep the family together. Man. Sometimes your brain 
through all the bullshit, through all the sadness, through all the comedy and levity and the joy you bring to the world, you say something, you say something that hits me. Deep. So deep. And so hopeful. Because my dad never... Pissed on you? No, he did pee on me. But we never played tennis. Maybe that's why I... Maybe that's why I would just hit tennis balls alone. Because I was looking for my father. And now you have your own daughter. You made your own tennis partner with your own seed. You didn't want a daughter to go to the zoo with. You didn't want a daughter to take to Disneyland. You didn't want a daughter to read Curious George at night. You wanted a lousy, stinking tennis partner. And you went ahead and made one. God bless you, Chuck E. Cheese. I didn't mean that. I didn't mean to call you. I don't know where that no, part came I'll, from. No, I'll take it. I answer to anything. <laughs> Sorry. Where there's That's, eye contact and, I know, and a but, dulcet tone. I know, but I didn't mean to call you an animatronic rat like Chuck E. Cheese. I don't know. I don't. It was, it you, was so you beautiful. You that, but I just heard Chuck E. Cheese and I felt the twinkle. You okay. could call me anything. Well, do you want to seduce the camera? Will you have that twinkle? Go ahead. Holy fuck. Are you fucking kidding me right now? Shh. Dial it back. Number two? Do you want me to call your daughter? <laughs> this is a uh, father, father-daughter moment. Dude, I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. I did poop. Oh, I looked like it. It was sexy. Ejaculated first. You did the double? It opened the canal. Oh, you are so German. The Panama. Wow. So okay. the crowd, know, you know, mm-hmm. some of the crowd felt something pretty deep. Uh, and now they see the tears because a man has made eye contact during an ejaculatory uh, bowel movement. And what th- would those be are the, rare. What would be the moniker for that? Would that be a bow? EJBM, baby. Bow ejaculate? Uh, like, how do you combine? Bow ho- ba- horseman? How do you bow combine ejaculate, ejaculate and, and, and bowel movement? Bow. Jack Gooman? Bowman? No. Hugh Jackman? Jack. I think Hugh Jackman. Is it E-Jack? I think it's Hugh Jackman. Because your, you... your underpants probably look like the Wolverine went through them at this point. Ejacula bow. Oh, my favorite breakfast E-bow. cereal. Have I you tried know. Frankenberry? Uh, I'm going to need probably 20 minutes and half a sandwich to do it again. <sighs> well, let's <clears throat> distract you with our final segment, oh, okay. Words from a Wooden Shoe with Kirk, Kirk, Kirk Fox. Kirk. What we do, you know this, you reach in, pull out a word, and see if there's a story from your life, oh God, your past, your future, your childhood. I'm going to go up around the toes. Yeah. Get fungal. Ah, oh, fuck. Here we go. Here we go. Talk to me. Wow. What is it? Creepiest fear. Wow. What's your creepiest fear, guy? I think you might have just done it in your underpants. Well, I don't know if this is a fear. Okay. But I often think about being kidnapped. Like I'm driving and I'm parked somewhere and someone gets in the car with a gun, points it at my head. And says, drive, head north. And I just start driving with this guy with the gun. And we just keep going. Stop for gas. Do a drive through, get some food. But we just keep going to Alaska. 
a cabin. We just started life to, together up there. And I just am happy. Because I've said goodbye to my wife and my ungrateful daughter who pees alone. On a toilet. That is creepy. But is it, I don't, it's more of a wish. Like, yeah. creepiest wish. Yeah. You have fear here, but creepy wish of being kidnapped yeah. and just Stop. thanking him. Yeah. At some point saying, brother, put the gun away. Yeah. I'm going. Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. Let's go. And you live out your remaining days? I just, I just live up there. We pee together. And it's not even sexual. Yeah, no, He no just way. needed a ride. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, I don't know. Is that creepy? Depends. Is it, well, pa- is it passionate? Is that just a, a th- fantasy? We all have fantasies. I think it depends what drive through did you go through on the way up. You mentioned you pulled into a drive through Which one was it? That'll tell a lot. It'd be taco based. Okay. It would be taco based. So okay. But uh, that's just that's just something. Like, it's a creepy wish. Okay. Put a gun to my head, say take me somewhere, and I just go. And I say you don't need the gun. Use a blow dart. So I guess you could tie that to a youth. I want to be alone, but I also just maybe want to be alone with a, with a guy, someone who's got the balls to just put a gun to my head and say let's go. In a cold, wintry cabin with t- tacos. Yeah, I, I get just it. like guys' company. I get it. I just like company of a guy sure you know and that's a long drive it's a long long drive driving from la to especially on taco bell that's a real long drive yeah but then you know i haven't really thought it out if we use the bathroom or you know does he come into the stall with the gun yeah these are all things that you know makes it creepy yeah but man just just the idea of bonding with friends and maybe talk about some of the things I've done. Yeah. Maybe, maybe he saw reservation dogs and we can talk about Oklahoma or just I think it was reservoir dogs. No reservation dogs is a, a show that all oh, your TV show. Yeah. That, I was yeah. a part of it. And that's, you yeah. know, I mean, I don't know if this is a plug. I don't know if that's a long way to try yeah, and pick up was. a viewer. I think it was, really. but Why it's don't streaming. You just tell the folks you have a TV show and fuck well, all this that's bullshit. There's a show called Reservation Dogs that, you know. That's all you it's really wanted. It's streaming FX on Hulu. Yeah, that's, that's what he Another was getting Another show called at. Jury Duty that you enjoyed. That you enjoyed can, Jury you Duty. Watch that. You were on that. But uh, it's about just putting a gun to my head <sighs> and knowing that you don't have to. Don't hurt me. Let's just go, man. I was talking to them. <laughs> oh, fuck. I don't use guns. I use blow darts. And this, ladies and gentlemen, was the seventh episode of the Holla Highway podcast with Kirk Fox. Check him out. See him do comedy. Ah. See his TV shows. Take him to Alaska and snuggle with him. No snuggling. It's just, let's just go hunt and just t- talk. Venison. Yeah, we go to Venice. Buddy. Hi. Thank you for being here. Thank you for Thank you. I hope my this audience. makes your life better. I know you're trying to accumulate fans and viewers for well, numbers. And what would help with that, on, on just going out as the theme music fades down, if you could just seduce me a couple of hundred extra subscribers with your eyes and we'll fade to black. Ladies and gentlemen, subscribe to the Harland Highway podcast. And perfect. Thanks, buddy. Welcome. See you in Alaska. I'll be there. My pussy.